Halloween, a time of terror, a time for horror, but as we all know, a time for trick-or-treaters. And I have a treat for you all on this frightful night. A book inked in blood and bound in human flesh. It's known as the Necronomicon Ex Mortis. And inside this book is a translation. A translation that can spawn a game straight from the depths of hell. The game is so evil, even Satan himself would shit his pants if he ever looked at it. So here's the translation, and now I will speak the word from the Necronomicon. Kanda, Ronokama, Asizomonza, Ronomon, Didiaria, Kanda, Kanda, Kanda. Well, here it is, Evil Dead Hail to the King for the PlayStation 1. So this game is an alternate continuation of the story that takes place after Army of Darkness. In this timeline, Ash got his old job back at S-Mart and met a girl called Jenny and everything was fine for a while until Ash started having gruesome nightmares of the cabin. Jenny thought I was crazy, but she agreed to help. We decided to go back to the cabin. They decided to go back? She said it would be good to face my fears. Well, she is just an imbecile. Anyway, Ash and Jenny arrive there. They sit down for like five minutes and would you look at that? It's already a disaster. Ash's possessed hand is still there and it switches on the tape recorder, unleashing the evil again. Damn it, it won't shut off. Shortly after, Jenny is taken by the evil and somehow Bad Ash is resurrected through the mirror. Not again. It's nice they tried recreating some scenes from the movie, but I still feel the story is kind of weak. But hey, we get this cool workshed scene, right? Groovy. So now the game actually begins, and the first thing you might be thinking is that this game is another Resident Evil clone. And yeah, you would be right. From the pre-rendered backgrounds, the tank controls, and even the inventory screen is pretty much identical. But in all honesty, I think this works for the first 3D Evil Dead game. So yeah, we play as Ash, of course. The moment you start playing, be prepared for a battle. A deadite will spawn from hell to catch you off guard. And you don't have time to think, so swing first, think never. Oh you cheeky floating jackass! Right, here we go, here we go, here we fucking go, have some of this! Shit. Just as I landed a few hits, the pussy hides back in the ground! Right, it's back. It's time to finish this off with the old chainsaw. Bastard, you have to turn the fucker on! Okay, I'm ready now, you cheap motherfucker! Let's do it! Round two! Ha! Ha! Got you! Good night! Voila! A big, fat, juicy health pack. You're going to need to stock up on these beauties. You'll be needing them very often because these deadites literally spawn every few seconds and i'm not joking when i say this it doesn't matter where you are or where you go they will be there to drive you crazy like look at this once you've twatted one to death instantly another one will come and have a go and it goes on and on and on and on and it's nonsense it's like a vicious never-ending cycle of bullshit Soon enough, you'll just realise running away is the best option. It saves health packs and fuel. Yeah, fuel, another thing you'll have to keep in mind. So, as you've already seen, you can turn on the chainsaw for high damage, but man, is it a thirsty bastard. On a full tank, it literally runs for like 20 seconds. It's a joke. What good is that if it runs out all the time? Well, I guess it's a good thing for these fuel cans lying around. Ah, fuck! Just leave me the fuck alone, will ya? Oh, I can't take this anymore. Just leave Jenny behind. She's just as good as dead anyway. Ooh, would you look at this? A page from the Necronomicon. 
Finding these pages just happens to be the main objective. By reading Nobby's notes in the inventory screen, it tells us that we must find all the pages. The first thing is to go to the shark west of the cabin. When you get there, the door will be locked. You'll need to find a cord to start the generator around the corner. And that leads us to the next area of the game. The maze. By God, this must be one of the worst mazes in a video game. Possibly of all time. Look at this. It's confusing as shit. You have no idea where you're going. And I'm already lost because of these stupidly placed camera angles. Also, it doesn't help that everything looks the bastard same too. Oh man, it's horrendous. It's a fucking test of patience taken to the extreme. Let me try and convey what a pain in the ass this maze is. Here is a sheet of paper with a random maze printed on it. Imagine you're this little dot here and you have to navigate through the maze to the end. It's standard stuff, right? You will be able to do it no problem. But now imagine doing it with your point of view snapping at different angles every time you reach the corner. Naturally, it's going to piss you off. That's how annoying this maze is. So, continuing on with the story, you make your way through to the attic and Ash will talk to this old hag, and she gives you the mundane task of finding an amulet in trade for a page. At this point in the game, you can use the converter. Yes, this pointless item here is now useful. In fact, it's very useful, because now every red mushroom you find can be converted into a small can of fuel, and it changes the game completely. Mushrooms spawn everywhere when you need them, so you'll never really run out of fuel again, and it makes the game a lot easier. So back to the amulet, when you find it and give it to the old hag, it's revealed she's a right big fuck off spider deadite. And that means only one thing, you have to cut the bitch up to get that page. And uh, weed killer. Weed killer? Oh, that means we have to go through the maze again? Fuck off, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off. Eventually, when you make it to the end of the maze for a stressful second time, you'll need to use the weed killer here to get to the next area where you face yet another boss. Tree bitch! And it has a tongue coming out of its oak ass. Right. What is it with evil dead and rape trees? I don't know, I don't really care anyway. When the fight is over, it drops another page, that's all you need to know. Next, the cutscene plays out where Ash talks to a priest at the church gates. He claims he can send the evil back if he can find five pages of the Necronomicon. Also, he says that Jenny came by and he picked up some car keys. Man, this guy is such a fraud. Already, I can see where this is going. So now with the keys, you can head back to the car to get the next page. Just a quick note here, a page was in the cabin, which I missed because why would you want to stick around with these annoying creeps? The last page is found in the scout camp east of the cabin. Also, by now you'll be able to convert white mushrooms into health. So from here on, health and fuel is not a problem. But now, the game no longer feels like a survival horror. It's too easy. The only problem you really face is getting blocked by enemies. Yeah, what a pain in the ass this is. Hold still, will ya? Kumbaya, baby. So, giving the pages to the stubborn priest grants you access into the churchyard. Now you need to figure out this stupid puzzle to unlock the church door. And man, this puzzle doesn't even make sense. How does placing a tombstone on a grave unlock the front door? It's nonsense. Next, you make your way down into the cellar, which looks familiar to the fruit cellar back at the cabin. Oh wait, yep, yeah, it is the fruit cellar because there's the old projector from the first movie. And look who's hiding down here. Annie from Evil Dead 2. Any? Someone's in my fruit cellar. Someone with a fresh soul. And as you might have thought, you have to send the bitch back to hell. To be honest, this fight ain't that hard. It ain't too bad. But it is a lot of arsing about with the camera angles. You always line up the shot. You tend to miss because the camera is obscured a little bit. It's not really facing the direction you want it to. And then when you run around, you always get hit. Overall, this fight is a disappointment, but it is a lot better than the tree battle. So with Annie defeated, now we can save Jenny, 
But surprise, surprise, the priest was actually Barash all along. He takes Jenny and escapes through a rift. Shortly after, Goodash jumps in after them, and that's the first part of the game over with. To continue on with the story, now we have to insert disc two. So just give me a moment. Oh wait, there's a note in the back of the book. Warning. Any translation may summon evil. Read with caution. still need to play disc two. Oh. Fuck! 